Hi, I'm Andy Smiley, your friendly podcast guide. I help you make money with your podcast without letting it take over your life. We are officially into the second month of season two. And let me just tell you, September was a ride. There were some high highs and some low lows and pretty much everything in between. In this episode, I'm sharing how the friendly podcast guide is doing last month's download episodes, how much money I've made, and how many podcast coaching calls I've done, along with reporting back on how last month's experiments went and the experiments I'm going to try this month to improve my show. I'll also be introducing the theme for this month's podcast episodes so you can excite, so you can be excited about what's coming up. But first, here are the answers to the questions that I ask every guest that I have on my show. <laughs> So what is the last podcast I listened to just for me? Um, The last podcast was Women Talking About Murder. It's like a parody of true crime podcasts. It is hilarious and just so silly. And it just makes fun of true crime podcasts in the most delightful way. Um, What's the lady's name from Parks and Rec? It's Leslie Nope, but that's not her name. I don't remember her name. Blonde, hilarious lady. It'll come to me. Um, But she is one of the producers of Women Talking About Murder. And every episode makes me laugh hysterically. And I can't do true crime at all. But this podcast is so funny because it's all fake, not real, and just hilarious. So if you need a laugh, go listen to Women Talking About Murder. I'll put a link in the show notes. It's delightful. And it's absurdity. (laughs) And then the other question I ask is what's a simple life hack that's making your life better right now? Um, one thing that I struggle with is falling asleep. Uh, my brain doesn't want to turn off and just wants to keep going and then I can't fall asleep. So I've started listening. Well, I've been listening to this sleep podcast for a while, but it just keeps working. And I want to tell you about it. It's called nothing much happens. And it's a podcast where Catherine, now I can't remember her last name, um, the host of the show just tells a story where nothing much happens and it works by, I don't know how any of the stories end because I fall asleep before the story's over, but it's delightful and very peaceful and has helped me fall asleep so much faster. So if you need some help in the sleep department, try nothing much happens. It's a really, really great sleep podcast. Now I get to tell you about this month's theme. This month's theme is history podcasts. And I have two main reasons that I wanted to do this theme. The first one is there are so many history podcasts out there, but each of them are unique. And it's fun to see how each history podcast like sets themselves apart. Um, And one thing that we can all learn from history podcasts is that the market is never too saturated because you bring the unique loveliness of you to your podcast. So if you want to start a true crime podcast, or if you want to start a, now I can't think of any other podcast types, um, a history podcast, or if you want to start a business podcast to tell people how to run their business better, go for it. If you feel that passion and you are excited about it, go for it because it will be unique because it's you. The other reason that I wanted to do this theme is I love learning about history. I am one of those people that is a little bit sad that I don't get to school, get to go to school every day anymore. So there are a lot of history podcasts that I really like, and I loved having the excuse to talk to these history podcasters for an entire hour. It was, it was definitely part, part of the reason for this theme was selfish for sure, because I wanted to talk to these lovely, lovely humans. Some of the things that you can look forward to learning from this month's episodes are how to help your guests and your audience understand each other better. Um, like some tips on how to coach your guests to speak more directly to your audience. Another thing you'll learn is how to fight imposter syndrome. This is something I learned from TK, the host of For the Love of History, and I literally started it, started this thing (laughs) that she talks about in the episode right after, and it really has helped a lot. 
Um, and then another thing you'll learn is a simple idea that will help you create the best possible podcast for you. I promise it's really simple, but also it really will help. Now on to how the Friendly Podcast Guide is doing. Last month's download numbers did not reach my goal of 150 downloads, but I definitely learned some things from them, from these numbers, and I'm hoping to do some things differently this month to make those numbers higher. So I'll just tell you how many downloads I got and then anything that I learned from those numbers. So the first, so the first episode last month was my how the friendly podcast guide is doing solo episode. And that one got 88 downloads. Um, honestly, super proud of that. Um, 88 downloads in the first week. I think it's more than a hundred now, which is super exciting, but that's not the goal. The goal is 150 in the first week. So, um, 88 downloads. That was really good. That was more than many, many, many of my past episodes have gotten. So very proud of that. Um, I did learn that I need to talk about it more than I, I feel like I was talking about it so much that week. Um, but I think I need to talk about it more. So there you go. Um, the next week was lively Lewis stories. That one got 86, um, downloads. So way higher than I expected, quite honestly, um, because it's so much longer than my episodes used to be. Um, I expected that number to be lower. Um, but I think one thing that really helped was I, I added Alexa, who is the host of Lively Lewis Stories, to be a contributor on Instagram for all of the posts um, about the episode. And she accepted all of them. And I know that that had to do with it because more people were like, oh, there's an episode where Alexa's talking. I really like her. Let's go listen. So I know that that played a part in those numbers being higher, which I'm really grateful. Um, the next week was Pixel Quest. That one got 76 downloads, so still higher than normal, um, or higher than what I used to get. That's a better way to say that, uh, but not as high as before. And I think part of that is because Mr. Jim didn't um, become a contributor for those Instagram like posts, and I don't blame him he's busy. He's got a life and a company to run. Um, but I think that was part of it. Like, so I got 10 less downloads and I think part of that was definitely the fact that, um, he didn't promote it quite as much as Alexa did on her, on his Instagram that week. And then the last one for September, which was last week was the search for the silver lining. And that one, did not do as well as I hoped. It was 57 downloads. Um, (laughs) truly, um, as one of the like low lows is these numbers not being where I wanted them to be, like not, not being close to my goal of 150 in the first week. But (laughs) the one thing that I was able to practice because of that is like picturing 57 people in a room and talking to them. Like that's a lot of humans. It makes it a little bit less disappointing, (laughs) but, um, just like with pixel quest, the host Megan was not, um, didn't become a contributor for the Instagram post. I think she did for one of them, but not all of them. And she didn't talk about it on her stories like Alexa did. So I do think that that was a big part of it is, um, like her followers didn't know that it was happening. Um, and I think that that's one of the, one of the contributing factors, at least for this month of how many downloads that my episodes got was if my guests talked about it on their Instagram or social media in general, then my download numbers were higher. So something to keep in mind, um, for your own show is try and... Do what you can to help your guests talk about your show. And I am going to think about that some more and see if there's other ways that I can help my guests talk about the show. Right now, just so you know, the main ways that I help my guests talk about the episode on 
their like social media platforms is all. Whenever I talk about the episode, I will tag them in the stories. Um, like I was, like I've been talking about a lot. Um, I also do tag them as like a contributor for posts so that it shows up on their page as well as mine. And that just makes the reach higher and helps more people know that there's an episode to listen to. Um, those are the two main things that I do now. I'm wondering if I need to add another way to do it and I'm not sure how. So if you have any suggestions, please DM me. I will take any and all suggestions. So those are my download numbers, not where I want to be, but we're, we learned some good things. Um, the next thing is how much I've made this year so far and I haven't made any more money so I'm still at $529 but I have had several podcast coaching calls which is what I'm mostly working on right now I do want to make money obviously but I know that the more podcast coaching calls that I do the better I'm going to get at podcast coaching calls and the more people will know how helpful I am with podcast coaching. So, um, while I haven't made any money, I did, um, do six podcast coaching calls in September. So my official number is up to 13. The better way to say that is I have 13 official coaching call hours because the goal is to get a hundred coaching call hours before I raise my rates, just so that I have a better idea of who, who I'm really good at serving and also who I like to serve in this podcasting community. Okay, so I've been really excited to tell you about the experiments that I tried in September, which ones worked, which ones didn't, and what I learned from the experience. So these are the experiments that I tried last month, um, the giveaway for season two starting. Um, That one was pretty successful. I feel like it didn't... I was hoping that it would help my download numbers be higher, and I think it did in some ways help my downloads be higher. Um if that's how you say that, be higher, help, help my downloads, whatever. My downloads were higher because of the giveaway. I'm pretty sure. Um, it was definitely my highest downloads of the month and I talked about the giveaway a lot, (laughs) but the other thing that I, that I was more excited about is that was the giveaway was how I, um, got several podcast coaching calls um, on my calendar was via the giveaway for both, um, people that won the giveaway and just people that heard about it. And they were like, I don't want to wait for the giveaway. Can we just do a consult call now? And I was like, yeah, sure. Let's do it. So yes, the giveaway was definitely successful. It was a lot of work. Um, but for me, at least it was definitely worth it. I got, oops, sorry. I got a lot out of that experiment. And I will definitely be doing more giveaways. Not only did it help me, but it's just really fun. I really love a giveaway. The the energy with a giveaway is just delightful and I really like it. So there you go. Um, the next experiment I tried was emailing the guests of my shows to do a cold open on their episode that comes out around the same time as their appearance on my show. So I learned a lot of things. (laughs) with this experiment. First of all, this only works for podcasts that are putting out episodes at the same time that you're putting out episodes. Like with Pixel Quest, they were done putting out episodes. It was it was kind of like a they had 30 episodes that told a story and then they were done. And those um episodes ended this summer. And so they didn't have any new episodes for me to put a cold open at the front of and and tell them about the episode. And that was the same like problem that I ran into with Search for the Silver Lining. They also had like a set number of episodes and they were done putting out new episodes. And so there wasn't an episode for me to put a cold open on. So that was a bit of a problem. And then there was also an issue with um, Lively Lewis stories. I think it was they were joining a network or something. Hmm. I don't remember exactly, but for some reason I couldn't do a cold open on theirs either. So it was kind of one of those like three strikes you're out. (laughs) I tried with all three emailing them and saying, Hey, can we do a cold open? Um, so that I can just tell your listeners about my show and about the episode that you're on. And they all said, I'm sorry, that doesn't work. So that was a failure (laughs) in that sense. But when I did reach out and say, Hey, I'd really like to do this. And they, they had to say, no, I feel like they kind of felt bad. So they're like, Oh, we can't do that, but 
I'll make sure to talk about it on social media or I'll make sure to send an email blast out to my listeners. And more than anything, sending that email to ask about cold opens just kind of reminded them that they even did the interview and that it was coming out soon. So they should be talking about it. So not as successful as I was hoping, but I am going to try it again this month um, and already have had some success with them saying, oh yeah, sure. So I'll check back and let you know if the cold opens work and help with this next month's episodes. We'll see. Um, And then the last experiment that I tried in September was not posting on social media on Tuesdays, which is the day that my episodes come out because that is like Tuesday morning is like the busiest (laughs) day of the week for me right now. Um, And honestly, I don't think it made much of a difference um, because I still posted on stories. I would just do a brief story to be like, Hey, here's a new episode. If you want to listen, it's here. And then I was talking about it for the rest of the week. So I think at least for now, I'm going to stick with it and not post on Tuesdays. Um, have that kind of be like my quiet day other than talking about it a little bit on stories. Um, cause it was nice to not stress about it, but we'll see. Okay. Now I get to tell you about the experience that I'm trying this month. Um, I actually have a lot, uh, this might be too many and I might get overwhelmed, but as of right now, this is the plan. I really want to come up with a nickname for you, (laughs) for my listeners. Um, because I think that is one great way to help us feel a little more connected. And I think it's really fun. So if you have any suggestions, please let me know about what you want to be called. (laughs) Um, yeah, in we talk about it in the episode that I um, did with TK, the host of For the Love of History. Um, she calls her listeners delicious donuts, which has nothing to do with history, but is absolutely delightful. So, yeah, I really would love to have a nickname for you. I think that sounds fun. Um, so that's one of my experience. Another one is putting a clip from the interview as the first thing you hear in the episode. Um we're going to try it and see if it brings you in, brings listeners in a little bit more. This is my idea. This this is the reason why I did it is because it's an engaging clip. It's short enough, um, but then you're kind of like listening to it subconsciously or you're listening for it um, throughout the episode to be like, ooh, when is when is TK going to see that say that funny thing um, during the episode? So we'll see. We'll see if it helps. Um Another big experiment that I am going to try this month is I'm going to start a new Instagram account. Um, The one that I've been using is the same one that I had when my podcast was more for helping moms find podcasts for themselves and their kids. Um, So I think that Instagram is a little bit confused as to what I do. (laughs) And I think I just need a fresh start. And I think that a lot of the people that follow me on my current account are not people that need what I am giving now. And I want to make sure that the people that are getting my content um, find it useful. And so we're going to see how it goes. I will let you know if it was helpful or a bad idea next month. I promise. Another experiment that I'm trying is I'm going to start doing more solo episodes. I've noticed that when I have a lot of interview episodes, especially back to back, it feels a little like I can't talk about my own ideas and my own advice because I need to talk about that week's episode and the advice that I got from, um, a really great podcaster. So I'm going to try and scale back on the interviews that I do a little bit. There will definitely still be interviews because I love doing interviews, but I'm going to scale back a little bit so that I can make sure that I am sharing my own thoughts, my own content. Um, and honestly also like more ways that you can work with me so that it feels more like my show and not like a show that I make about other people if that makes sense. So be on the lookout for more solo episodes. Interview episodes are not gone, but 
you'll just hear a little bit more just from me as well. And then the last one is one, and it, <laughs> the last one, the last experiment is one that I'm currently doing right now. Um, I am recording this episode the day before it comes out. It comes out tomorrow and I'm recording it right now. And to say that I'm stressed is an understatement, <laughs> but um, I wanted to have the latest numbers for downloads and the most information about the experiments that I ran. So I decided to make the jump and record this and edit it and like upload it, do all of the things all in one day. So I'll let you know how it goes. If it doesn't go well, then I'll figure something else out. But that's yet another experiment <laughs> that I'm trying this month. Will you share this episode with your podcasting friend who's been struggling with feeling alone and having low download numbers? She can follow along with me as I increase my download numbers too. In next week's episode, you'll hear a conversation I had with Monique, the creator of the History Kid podcast, Time Traveling Tanya. Monique will remind you and me that your podcast has already set you up for mon money making opportunities. You just have to get creative to see them. Thanks for being here. I'll see you next week.